literally just exist for music YouTubers to make clickbait content about. Right, explain to me how one of the most wealthiest bands on the planet can have the most excruciating, end of life inducing music videos ever. Ugh! They use an awful lot of whale imagery considering the fact there aren't any whales in the band. The only thing Behemoth can do to make me like them is to change the B in their name with a H. So they'd be called Hehemoth. Much better. He he muff. Somehow, being in one of the biggest, coolest bands in the history of music just isn't enough for some people, and they feel the need to spend their whole career bickering and fighting with each other like a couple of chops literally just exist to showcase their lead guitarist. Oh, what can I say about Pantera? Um, well, you know, they were one of the most revolutionary original bands in the history of metal and really defined what quality music was. And then they released Cowboys From Hell. Opeth, more like, oh dear, you know, you know your band sucks when even Kirk Hammett wants to leave. Maybe one day Testament will make it big enough so that they can finally afford the missing half of Chuck Billy's mic stand. Now listen here, boys and girls, if you're ever doubting yourself, then just remember that somebody is absolutely as clueless as Ozzy Osbourne somehow managed to make a successful career out of music. Such a freaking depressing band name. You know, they could have had way more fans if they called themselves something more positive, like life. Just when you thought heavy metal fans couldn't get any dorkier, Amon Amarth gives us the bearded, Mjolnir necklaced, Viking RPA metal fan. Angra! Yeah, okay, I'd better not say anything here or I'll get cancelled by the entire nation of Brazil. Mastodon is a pretty cool name, but if it was up to me, I would have chosen another extinct animal, like the dodo, because it sounds like doo-doo, which is what Mastodon's music reminds me of. Meshuggah are a pretty sick band, but I would personally be willing to erase all of their music from history if it meant that all of the absolute tap water tier copycat bands that they spawned would just <coughs> disappear forever. They had to make their music as fast and heavy as possible to disguise their absolutely hilarious Birmingham accent. On um, what we can say, a Tuesday afternoon in Birmingham by the canal. You can say great setting. I feel like filling a cradle with a torrent of my own filth after listening to their music. If three hour long vanilla Minecraft Let's Play videos were a band. Their name is literally a vegetable. And vegetables are boring. Just like Korn's music. Which is a vegetable. When your best song is a cover of Andrew <coughs> Floyd Webber, you know something went very wrong somewhere. If I wanted to listen to music with keyboards, I just programmed my bloody razor to play fart noises whenever I pressed a key. They have to dress like a black metal band to disguise the fact they're basically just ABBA. Varg Vicanus pretty much only exists to be edgy 15 year old Discord kids profile pictures. As if they didn't already have only just a little bit of reputation to hang on to, this happens. Yikes. No one really, oh, really gives a shit about Mayhem's music. You know, they, they only care about some stupid shit some dumbass kids did like 30 years ago. Judas Priest haters are just salty because they can't get their lovers to scream as loud as Rob Halford can. Ah! They say that every 30 seconds, somewhere in the world, a guitar nerd is telling their completely uninterested friend how sick the fermented awful discharge solo is, bro! Some call Lamb of God pure American heavy metal. Well, I don't much care for them, but that's probably because I'm not American. I'm European. We are a distinguished, cultured peoples. That's what, mate. Thanks. Bye. See ya. Now, I was trying to think of something to roast Anthrax about, but I couldn't remember any of their songs. I guess that says a lot about them, really, doesn't it? Not even... 
eight other band members can contain Corey Taylor's ego. They rival Tool for the most excruciatingly annoying fan base ever. They rival Dream Theater for the most excruciatingly annoying fan base ever. They wrote one of the best metal albums of all time and then spent 15 years trying to follow it up. Metal fans go out of their way to criticise autotune at any given opportunity, but when disturbed, plasters it all over one of their most iconic songs, nobody batters an eyelid. And voice literally America personified in one single band somehow managed to make a whole career out of literally releasing the same album over and over again. Somehow managed to make a whole career out of literally releasing the same album over and over again. Definitely get the award for the sickest band with the most absolute bargain bin tier fan base. On paper, this band really, really should not work, but somehow it did. They literally only exist to moisten the panties of Instagram goth girls called Lilith666 or Raven Slut Lestat. Textbook example of how not to run a band. Winner of the cringiest band slogan ever award. Discount Iron Maiden for Europeans. You know, deep down, people only hate on Limp Bizkit out of insecurity because deep down, you know that you'll never, ever be as cool as Fred Durst. If one of those slick, stylish car commercials were a band, every freaking time they do that predictable switching to clean singing in the chorus, it makes me want to engage the kill switch on my life. If a Pro Tool session became sentient and started wearing expensive clothing, you'd get something that would resemble periphery. Well, that's an easy one. He sucks at making his own music, so he has to piggyback of the success of genuinely talented, successful bands in order to increase his self-worth and find approval in the hellish, tormented landscape of online content creation. And he has a chronic problem with excessive armpit hair growth. <laughs> Alright mate, do that, do that, then do that. Nice one.